Whoa! It's 3D! Woo! Watch out. Watch out. It's coming right for you. I Holy I shit. It's... I can't actually make it in 3D, but I can make it look like it's the 3D thing. I'd need... I'd need Alright, either... this was a failed bit. Let's but just get on I'd, with the... I'd need better equipment if I, if I wanted to make it look 3D. So we watched Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D. Which... Yeah. Uh, that we did. I... Because I, I was trying to do this in as few discs as possible, so I have mostly, like... Double features. But I went out and ex explicitly bought the 3D version of this one. This was, um... <laughs> Which we didn't even watch for a lot of it. Okay, so starting off with the movie, they do the trope... I guess this is a trope for Friday the 13th, where they just play the last 15 minutes of the, mo of the previous movie <laughs> without any changes. Which like, doesn't even affect this movie. <laughs> Like, they got to the end of the production and it was like, crap, we're 15 minutes down in time. What do we do? And it's like, well... Gotta, gotta get Betsy Palmer in there. Yeah, it was... And it, the, it was really distracting because they didn't reshoot it in 3D. Like, it's not where it's a shot <laughs> yeah, no, where, like, they reimagine the, the last 15 minutes. No, it is the actual footage from the last movie. There's, like, a s splash card that's, like... This this film uh, the beginning of this film is not in 3D, but you'll need your glasses. But of course, then they have the opening credits in 2D, even though it's like whoosh, come straight at you, like it should be in 3D. I, 3D doesn't start till the movie starts. I I knew that this movie was gonna be a gimmick going in, but I didn't realize how shitty it was gonna be when when we actually got in there. None of the acting was good, even passable. Everybody just felt like they wanted to go home. Like, I'm, I just, I could, none of the performances were good. Not everyone was terrible. None right. The, the lead and the, the female and the male lead. Who were them? Uh, Chris and the dude Chris was hanging out with the whole movie. Chris was the girl. Chris was the girl. Probably short for, like, Christina. Or Christine. Yeah, I, I honestly don't remember who the guy's name was. I don't remember the guy's they name have, either. They didn't give a name to their lead actor. <laughs> like, how they, is... <laughs> they were, like, characters from, uh... That game franchise I mentioned while we were watching it. Oh, yeah, Resident Evil. Resident Evil. Evil. Just... Oh, it, it, everything was just such an underreaction... Except for the jump scares. <laughs> like, the directing on the jump scares was so lazy, like, but it hey, was Paul. like, ah! ah! And they both scream at the same time. It was so overdone. I... Oh, man. There's a moment where there's, like, a twig snap in the distance, and the dude's like, What, what was, was that, that noise? noise? <laughs> like, oh, like a bit of an overreaction there. No, like, no, at that no. point, they didn't even know there was a killer. Right, right. The, I mean, the music in this one was actually not bad. Um, Still Harry Manfredini. Yeah. The first movie. I mean, I mean there it seemed like they had a live orchestra. There was the bully trope uh, in this movie, except... Well, it, yeah. Well, it, was, it was even more distorted than it normally was in this time like period. Like a biker gang... Like, they just, they were so underdeveloped, like, okay, so the guy throws the wallet across the screen, and it's like... Whoa, coming right at you! And then the the chick fails to grab it, and then this, this biker chick picks it up and is, like, threatening something? Like, she just has the wallet, won't give it back like a dick. Yeah, and then she's like, oh, you gotta ask nicely! And like, so then she's like, can I please have it back? And she just gives it back. Like, there was no point... And then the guy accidentally runs over their bikes well, and... There was a point. It was to siphon the gas from their van so she couldn't escape later. Oh, man, that's really convenient, wasn't that, it? <laughs> that was, was a long way to go for that. I mean, at least they established it and it wasn't just like, Oh, the car won't start. Yeah, like the car actually started, but then they didn't get anywhere. 
Yeah, she got to, like, the bridge. That's sort of like the plot of this movie. Like, it got going a little bit, and then it just kind of stalls out halfway through. <sighs> I'm not sure if I liked this better than 2 or not. I would say... no. Because it, it... well, it feels less serious than 2. Yeah, that, that's very true. I didn't know any of the characters' names, except for Chris, because they said it 5,000 times. And Jason. Oh, which they yeah, didn't they... say, actually. Really? That's right. They, they never said Jason's name. Like, you... There's, like, a scene where they're driving past the hospital and they're taking the girl from part two out. That's the only clue that this takes place the day after part two. Or I... even in the same universe. <laughs> Like, Jason doesn't look the same as the last movie. In uh, fact, this is the first time that he has the hockey mask when on. When he takes the mask off, he looks sort of the same, except now he's bald. He's, did, he, he decided to shave sometime between the, the last, the last two hours. Yeah, and like overnight he decided to shave his head. It also doesn't make any sense, too, that... Um, Just, everything happened the day after. Like, yeah. in, in the last movie, it was, oh, the, well, they were close to the uh, mountain, Crystal, Crystal Mountain Lake. Uh, Camp Crystal Lake, yeah. Camp Crystal Lake. Um, and then, you know, that the reason that they got killed is because they went that close, and then they were also having sex, or whatever the moral judgment yeah, was Yeah, like, on people that. were sneaking into Camp Crystal Lake, and that sort of led Jason back to where they were. No, but this, I don't have a clue where this one takes place. He just shows up. He's just there. Yes. Yeah. We get a replacement for the uh, for the crazy guy who was like the omen giver of the of the last two movies. Which which kind of you know there was no point in him dying. He just dies and now oh hey there's another one that took his yeah, place. Yeah. Like this small town always has two crazy people at the same time. I get well. I guess he wasn't really in the small town, was he? What do you mean? Well, because he was just laying in the middle of the road. <laughs> oh yeah, that's right! <laughs> he was just asleep in the middle of the road! A literal roadblock to the plot. <laughs> uh, plot? Yes! <laughs> uh, can we talk about Jason, though? Because fucking... Him? Oh, yeah. Like, Clumsy as hell. Yeah, okay. So, like, in the second movie, mm -hmm. Jason has a presence but isn't really on screen that much. A lot like Pam, Pam Lavore, he's in the first movie, or right. Michael in Halloween. Mm -hmm. In this movie, he shows up, like, he, he he's kind of doing that most of the movie. Yeah. And then after he's killed everyone except the final girl, he comes out and is trying to kill her, and is just completely inane. He's so incompetent at everything he's trying to do, and it takes all the fear away from him. It's like, look at this doofus. Like, in the, last, in the last two movies, he took a lot of people by surprise, and that's how he got the kill. In this one, it's not that he took people by surprise so much. I mean, he did that. But it was more that he, um, he just took a lot of hits. Like, in the last movie, I think he got hit a couple times. This time he gets, like, fucking stabbed. He gets a cleaver to the face. He gets knocked in the head a few times. He takes a knife to a leg, and then you see him chasing her later, and he's, like, limping. It's like... But it's, like, it's never explained. I mean, yeah, I guess he's already dead, technically. Yeah. But that's never explained how he came back to life. I think they explain it later in the series. Okay... I mean, I mean, I guess the, the not that it's really necessary, but yeah, yeah. I, th I think they explain later that like Mrs. Voorhees used. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, in Jason Goes to Hell, she has uh, the Necronomicon from Evil Dead. What? So that's fun. That I didn't know Jason went to hell. When yeah. is this movie? That's part nine. Wow, they really did give up on this. 
I don't even know if he actually goes to hell in that movie or not. I I, I don't think he goes to hell until like the very end. We I have, might be wrong. I haven't seen it. We have it yet. great things to look forward to then. Yes, we do. Unlike this shitty ass gimmick. That's all this movie was. Yes. Yeah. Let's do a slasher movie, but in 3D. I think this came out shortly after Jaws 3D, too. No, I think this was before Jaws 3D. Oh. Well, it's in the same vein as Jaws 3D. Yeah. Just shitty 3D. Yeah. It doesn't... It, it, you know, they, they did a good job with it when it was just a normal scene, and it kind of helped to enhance it, but when they actually tried to, like, ooh, we're reaching out at you, it, it, it looked fake. Yeah. It looked like it was CG. It was and that it, bad. It, like... So we watched, we watched like 10, 15 minutes of it in 3D, and we're like, okay, this kind of hurts. Yeah. So we just switched it to regular, and then we're like, all right, now it's the finale, now we'll watch it in 3D. So we did see the finale in 3D. We got to see the full experience that this movie had to offer. In 3D! Alright. I don't recommend it. No, I can't. I can't do it.